Monarch is building the future for those interested in one wallet that consolidates the best services and functionality into one simple and easy to use app. Monarch will empower users to control all aspects of their financial kingdom from the palm of their hand. You may have heard the phrase, not your keys, not your crypto. With Monarch, you own your keys and seed, meaning you own your crypto. With Monarch, you can store, receive, send, swap, buy, sell, and earn interest on your crypto, track your portfolio, the news, the market cap, and more today. We're constantly adding new services and updates too. Learn more today by visiting monarchtoken.io or download the wallet for free today from Apple or Google. Hey, friends. We're here. Yeah, yeah. we're here. Thank you to our show sponsor, uh, Monarch. Uh, and we have a new sponsor as well. Is that right, Jay James? That's true. We are now um, going to be joined with uh, some additional support from Manscaped, who, as you know, is the, uh, the best in men's below-the-belt grooming. Uh, they are offering a precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer, the Lawnmower 2.0, has proprietary skin safe technology so this trimmer won't nick or snag your nuts <laughs> which means finally gentlemen manscaping accidents are a thing of the past trust us your balls and your lady will thank you so use a promo code go to manscape.com use promo code beards you'll save yourself 20 percent, and you'll get yourself some free shipping so uh, let, let's keep it real here have, have you ever nicked yourself Oh man, I actually have. Uh, I have it's, as well. <laughs> it's not pleasant. Uh, it stinks. No, it's not. Yeah, it it does something to you mentally too. You're just like, oh, okay. So, all right, guys. Well, welcome to Beards and Bitcoins, the crypto podcast for the man's man and the uh, the women who love them, the ladies that love them, of course, and uh, they do love uh, grooming. So you should love grooming as well. But uh, joined keep by my the, co-host Jay the, Chains, it is me, Ben from Bitcoin Crypto. And uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, something that's going on that has kind of been a hot, uh, hot button issue on Twitter the last few days. I made a video about it last night, and you know a, a lot of people are upset about the situation. And I know uh, Jay Change, you you had actually tweeted about it a couple days ago. Of course, we are talking about the situation between Poloniex uh, slash CZ from Binance slash Justin Sun versus Jared Tate. Uh, the founder of Digibyte, but I, I do think it's important for everyone to know that uh, he it, it's a decentralized project. So he's not a CEO of this project in the same way that you know some other crypto CEOs are. He doesn't have access to any of the funds uh, and things like that, which has been a, a big source of contention for Digibyte getting listed on major exchange. They want listing fees. He's saying he can't provide it. It's owned by the community. Yada yada yada. But Poloniex basically delisted Digibyte, or they're in the process of doing it uh, because of a rant that Jared Tate went on. And so uh, I, I want to know from your perspective, Jay Chains, what you feel like, uh, you know, wh what is your opinion about the situation? Well, for me, um, for me, it's kind of like a, a, a strange thing. I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of torn. I know some people that are, you know, really kind of focused hard with the, the Tron project, the Tron foundation. Uh, I know that, you know, some of my friends are really um, big into it and they do a lot of work for it. So uh, I think that it's a, it's just another one of those. It, if I'm uh, permission to speak freely here, um, I think it's, I think it's bullshit. I think that, you know, what's going on and you know what to, to let's just rewind this for one second um i know mid-earth crypto he made a comment on the post that i had did on um we love quinn by the way um yeah. on, on twitter the other day about how you know it's if your buddy owns chick-fil-a and you're gonna buy popeyes so that you can stop selling french fries so that you don't have to compete with the french fries that he's selling at chick-fil-a you know something along those lines so like i, I totally understand it but i think it pretty much brings to light how centralized that project is what which project tron tron how 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 does that mean tron is centralized because didn't the tron foundation buy the exchange or what was no no so okay so i, I think there's a big source that people don't really understand what happened um so poloniex was with poloniex was an independent company Mm -hmm. And I guess they were struggling or, or whatever. And they decided they were going to allow Circle to buy them, a big financial company. Right. Um, you know, there's the Circle app. It's, it's kind of like Square, but it's Circle, you know. Uh, <laughs> they, I, I'm not completely well-versed with what they do. But I do know that uh, I think you used to could, I feel like you used to could buy Bitcoin with Circle, I think. 
because I think I actually did that once, uh, you know, a long time ago. But uh, at some point, Poloniex decided or Circle decided that they didn't want to be involved with each other anymore. I wasn't sure who pulled out, okay? So That's one of them said. decided they were going to pull out. And at that point, uh, a Justin Sun-backed group, so a, a group of investors, Justin Sun, not the only investor, one of the investors, um, I, I don't even know if he's the main investor in it. We do know he has a lot of money, so he has the power to be a huge investor. But a, a Justin Sun included group bought Polon or they didn't per se buy Poloniex. They gave them the funds to allow them to be able to be independent again. And, do you and consider is that from, that's from like circle. that's like seed capital, right? But so, something similar to that, right? Okay. So. Uh, now that uh, Justin Sun has all kinds of money uh, or like, invested in Poloniex, um, you know, now Poloniex announces a Tron partnership. They listed Tron. Um, and they, they even went as far as said, they, didn't they say, we will allow you to, or we will list every, any and every Tron project you could imagine? Probably. I mean, why, why would they not? If, if, if Justin Sun well, because is the they main said investor. Well, because they said they're delisting digibyte because they don't meet their qualifications yet no, they're no, just that's gonna... all bs we know that we, we know that's bs well why do they go out and say this kind of stuff well i i feel like we got we, we have to continue mapping this out yeah, to get yeah, to okay. that point, yeah i'm sorry okay? we jumped ahead you, you jumped ahead because you just so want to trash tron which is fine i mean i'm i'm, I'm not <laughs> going to defend justin son or, or tron in this situation i'll defend poloniex a little bit and, and i'll mm. explain why in, in a minute okay um but they went so far as Justin Sun actually took over their Periscope account or their Twitter account a couple of weeks ago. So we do know that Justin Sun is heavily involved with Poloniex right now. Okay. So this doesn't have anything to do with Tron per se. Like right. he is the CEO. They have a partnership with Poloniex, but really Justin Sun is so invested in Poloniex that he can pull strings there now. I mean, it's just like, it's just like I've been recently reading Bitcoin Billionaires, uh, which is a phenomenal book. If, you, if you are watching this or you're listening to this episode and you have not either read or listened to the audio version of uh, Bitcoin Billionaires, you need to stop what you're doing. Well, no, actually finish listening to this podcast. And oh. then after that, okay, after that, you go either buy or download this book. It is phenomenal. But, uh, you know, the, the reason why I bring all that up is like, you know, kind of bit instant when Charlie Shroom was in charge, the Winklevoss twins were the main investor. They were the ones keeping it going. So, Guess what? When you're the main investor of a company, you can pull strings there. Ultimately, that company has to give you the go ahead. But if you're the sole reason that they're still open, basically, then you have power there. And I feel like that that's what's going on with Poloniex and Justin Sun is it, it, it's not Tron. He's invested in it and he has enough money invested in it to pull strings there. And I think that's what's going on. So we, we can talk about how centralized Poloniex is. We can talk about how decentralized or how centralized crypto exchanges are but i do not feel like you can say based on what happened that tron itself is is centralized it's this is a poloniex it, it's tron, it, that's like common knowledge though that that tron is a centralized they hide themselves as decentralized but they are truly centralized in what right? way really yeah i'm just saying in what way like that, that that's jargon that's like clichés that people throw around right nerd alert nerd 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 alert. Alert. Because, I said, because I said, how are they centralized? <laughs> but I just feel, I just feel like you're, you're, you have bought into the same thing that people have bought into, which is all it takes is a bunch is 80% of crypto not liking Tron to jump on and say, it's centralized, it's centralized. None of those people even know what they're saying. Like, explain to me how it's centralized. There are some arguments that people can make to explain Tron is centralized. I've heard some kind of under uh, the underbelly of Tron, what's really happening with, you know, whether it's bots or uh, super representatives actually being ran by Tron. Like people can, uh, people can walk me down those conversations and I will listen to them because I don't have proof otherwise. But to just say it's centralized for the sake of, of repeating what you hear other people say, I don't think that's valid. Like, no, I wanna, I, like, oh, it's common knowledge, it's centralized. Explain it. What do you mean by that? Okay, so in, in my opinion, uh, so you've got a, a Bitcoin. Bitcoin is decentralized. There's no CEO. Right. There's a, a bunch of random developers that work on things. There's no company that puts money into marketing to push it, uh, to make it a, a pump and dump to really... Well, we see, we, we see Bitcoin pumped and dumped every day. 
Yeah, but that's, I mean, that's manipulation done by whales. That's different. That's not, yeah, but, that's but, not the CEO of a project. But, it, but it's really not, though, because it, when it comes to centralization and decentralization, there is this idea that this is centralized and this is decentralized. That this is centralization and this is decentralization. When in reality, the truth is that decentralization and centralization is a scale. And any topic you want to talk about falls somewhere amongst the continuum of centralization and decentralization. So we could say that in a way, Bitcoin is centralized because the limited supply and the amount of Bitcoin that is in the hands of a very few people allow the investors to be able to manipulate the price based on their individual actions. People can say that. The project right. itself is, is not centralized in a, in a corporate structure. It doesn't have a CEO. It, it does have Blockstream that uh, there's a lot of iffy stuff about Blockstream. A lot of people would tell you that it is very sketchy the way that it handles the Bitcoin development um, and things like that. But it doesn't have a traditional corporate structure. It doesn't have a CEO. It doesn't have the face of Bitcoin, which thank God Satoshi is anonymous, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm not going to sit here and say Bitcoin centralized. I don't believe it is. But what I'm saying is every project lies somewhere on that continuum, including Bitcoin, okay? So when you're saying like, oh, it's, it's centralized because it has a CEO compared to Bitcoin, well, uh, let's talk, you know, Digibyte or let, let me use Dash for instance, okay? Dash is a DAO. It's a decentralized autonomous organization. However, it has a centralized nonprofit behind it that runs it, you know? So on so Vitalik Buterin had a really incredible art, uh, article about a year and a half ago about what is decentralization and about how nothing is truly decentralized. It, at some point, like decentralized exchanges, for instance, okay? People say, oh, they're decentralized. Well, okay, well, didn't somebody have to buy the URL? Didn't someone have to name it? Oh, absolutely. There's so, no such thing as a true DEX, in exactly. my opinion. Yeah, it, almost the, the decentralization is not even really a thing. If, if, if something was truly decentralized, it would have no structure and not be able to run. Nothing, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. Even if you were to have an all machine AI robot learning, stuff like that, still yeah. somebody has to be the first one to type the code yeah. in. So you're right. There is no yeah. true. So, so, so when people say something like Tron is centralized, okay, m first of all, most people have no idea what they're talking about when they even say that. They're literally just, I, I need to learn there's a phrase for this where people, and I think we've talked about it on the show before, where people just regurgitate things they've seen people say without having any substance or understanding about what is actually being said. They're mm -hmm. just like, uh, Tron's decentralized, or Tron centralized, and they, they just go repeat that everywhere, you know? Um, the, the fact is people hate Justin Sun. The majority of people in crypto hate Justin Sun. So well, he's, he's, he just does too much. He's too hypey. That's, that's my thing with him. He's too hypey. Yeah. Well, uh, honestly, I <laughs> like, honestly, I felt like over the last, ever since the Warren Buffett thing happened, which was not his fault by any stretch of the imagination. Um, ever since that event, I'd actually seen like a maturing process from him. And I've seen mm -hmm. the, the Tron marketing go a totally different direction but over the over the last week, all this stuff that's been going on um, with Poloniex, it really shows me that it, it, we're almost kind of back back to square one with it because we're, we're you, right back where we do you were. think do you think he took a lot of heat uh, around the time of canceling the lunch and you know everybody's like, oh, the announcement of the announcement of the announcement. Do you think someone said, hey man, you got to chill it out like let's let's take a different approach to our marketing? A absolutely, but those people are no longer at Tron. <laughs> that's true. That's you're true. Fired. You're info. fired. Yeah, the, the, those people that were doing that and, and temping that down are no longer with Tron. So I, I think we're going to see the return of uh, this Poloniex thing. To me, it really shows that we're going to see a turn from, from Tron to, to kind of go back to the old way that they were doing things. So um, th that, that does worry me a, a little bit of, uh, about it. But uh, let's get back to the, to the main issue here, which we haven't even really talked about, which is what happened is Jared Tate, the founder of Digibyte, like I said, he's not the CEO. He's the founder, okay? Mm -hmm. He has a limited number of the tokens. He doesn't have a, a huge amount or, or coins or coins, actually. It, it doesn't have, you know, a huge amount of them where he can move the market with them or anything like that. I mean, maybe, maybe he has a personal collection, I'm sure. But he comes out and has this tirade against CZ and Justin Sun, ca calling them scammers, okay? And saying that they are tyrants and they're overtaking blockchain, 
yada, 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 yada. And in what might be the most savage yet petty thing I have ever seen in crypto, literally the most petty, the most savage thing at one time I've ever seen on Jared Tate's thread about <laughs> it was long it was a long thread i think it was eight i think it was eight eight tweets or whatever uh -huh. after the eighth one or the last one in the series poloniex commented and said after careful review we've decided digibyte no longer meets our standards like, like dude so savage i cannot believe the audacity and the balls that uh, the Poloniex account, which may have been Justin's undoing, I don't know. But yeah, no, with no explanation. It was no explanation. Like you said, it was cold blooded. Whoa, was, is that Fia in the background? I see you in the window. That's my dog. She's scratching her neck. You can see her in the back. What up, girl? How you doing? That's my blondie. You know. Yeah. All right, continue. <laughs> I don't I'm know sorry, I dude. Saying. That dog just got me all kinds of twisted. <laughs> I, uh, I, for me, it was literally, uh, like you said, it was it was savage. It was cold blooded. You know, it's in no way, shape, or form was it a response to anything that he had put out. Right. Yeah. I think it was. Well, no, they, no, they did. They they did say something about he was accusing them of something to do with customers' data, and the first part of that tweet was actually, uh, you know, that's not really true. And well, then it wasn't that. Up, wasn't there a it wasn't a data breach but it was something where uh information was like locked up and or something, something right I, I i think it had something to do with uh with circle still owning but when circle owned poloniex they had uh customer information or something like that oh, okay yeah i'd have to actually go back and reread it right now to understand exactly what there's in i was i was more focused on the the second part the savageness god dude <laughs> So like to, for, for so them, is there, can we find out who can we find out who's running the account? Is it Jason? Is it We know he has ran it. We know he went live on it. So we know he has the login information to it. So I I, I don't know I, I don't know how you know uh, I don't know if Justin Sun's in the Poloniex office now. Uh, he has an office there. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if he has information. I just don't know the level and no one knows this. No one except for Justin Sun and Poloniex knows the level in which he's integrated with what's happening day to day at Polonix. Wow. Yeah. It's uh it's one of those things we'll see, you know, how it goes. I I personally I I've never traded on Poloniex. I don't in, actually intend to. So Me you know it's yeah, it's like no skin off my back. But the whole just kind of the whole the approach and the way that it went and, and the way it was handled, that's what grinds my gears, I guess. Yeah. Well I I think that here here's the thing though. Okay. And, and this is where I will def defend Poloniex on, on some level, okay? If if you were, um, let's say you're, you're Pepsi, okay? You're not Coke. Everybody wants Coke, okay? People don't want Pepsi. If you go to a restaurant and it has Pepsi, do you know what that means? Uh, I don't drink soda, so no. It means that that restaurant was too cheap to pay for Coke. Is Coke more expensive in the... Absolutely. It, well, here's, here's the difference. Pepsi works with accounts. So if, if you want Coke, you have to pay them up front. If you want Pepsi, they will work out a deal with you where you can pay them later. They will work out payment plans. Pepsi's very flexible with companies. And that's why companies use them over Coke. Coke is kind of like, eh, take it or leave it. Okay. You know? So, so let's, just say, let's just say that uh, you are Pepsi and you're in like a... Uh, let's say that there's a comp, there's a restaurant. Okay. Let's just say Taco Bell. I'm making all of this up. Okay. okay. None of this is true. But I'm just giving a scenario. Okay. Let's say Taco Bell try to get Coke and they would not, Coke would not work with them. Okay. So I say, okay, well, you know, we, we have a lot of restaurants. We got to work with Pepsi. So you use Pepsi and then you decide to come out with an ad campaign about how much Pepsi sucks. And Pepsi says, we were willing to work with you, but you know what? At this point, like you said all that stuff about us, we're, we're not going to work with you anymore. And, and now you got to go find somewhere else. Like you were, you were already using the second tier. So Digibyte is not on Binance mm -hmm. because once again, personal issues between CZ and Jared Tate. Okay. You're not on Coinbase. So you're not on two of the biggest exchange. You're not on the two biggest exchanges. Okay. Right, right. I don't know what Asian exchanges they're on. I, I can't really say for sure. But I know that those are the two biggest exchanges. And if you're not on either one of those, then that's going to hurt your project. Okay. Right. 
So now you're on Poloniex. So yeah, it sucks. I don't use it. You don't use it. Most people don't use it. But beggars can't be choosers. Ooh. Beggars can't be choosers. Uh, that's very true. That is very true. And so you're going to come out and rail against one of the only places that will list you. Look, I like Digibyte. I'm not invested in it, but I like it. You know why I like it? Because I like a lot of the people that are involved in it. We know Laura. We love Laura, right? Laura Taylor. Laura we love her, Digi. the Digibyte awareness team. We, we've talked to several people when we went to Bitcoin Ben's meetup with Digibyte. Like, we like the Digibyte people. We really do, okay? Shout and, out to the Digibyte family. What's that? Yeah, we're, we're up to the Digibyte fam. You know, like definitely. I've had, I've had people um, from DigiAssets and DigiID on my channel to talk. Not, they didn't pay me j just because I like those people. So I like the community, okay? However, the, when you're not listed on major exchanges, your project's going to be limited. Yeah. And so Digibyte is already working uh, at a, um, Deficit, with a disadvantage. Right? Yeah, yeah. There you go. And now you got the founder coming out and railing against two of the more powerful people in crypto. And now Digibyte gets delisted from Poloniex. Like, look, if somebody, if I give somebody a guest appearance on my channel, like let's say there's somebody that had a thousand subscribers, okay, or 500 subscribers. I got 13,000. I'm not, I'm certainly not one of the bigger crypto YouTubers by any stretch of the imagination. But if I agree to give somebody a guest spot once a month on my channel and they come on, and all they do is rail against how much I suck. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tell them, no, get the off my channel. Yeah, you're not going to extend that olive branch too much longer. That's for sure. <laughs> Absolutely not. So we, we have this idea that in crypto with exchanges, like it should be different. But if you talk smack about me, I'm not going to help you, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a good point. I mean, don't bite the hand that feeds you, especially that's, like you said. That's if, it. Do not if, bite the hand that feeds you. Especially if you're not getting traction on some of the other exchanges, maybe you shouldn't. Yeah, that's a good point. Not yeah. something I thought about. So uh, there, there were certain people like uh, Rob McNeely, who was on our channel a couple weeks ago, uh, who was on, on, we like Rob, he's, he's with Tusk. We love guns here on Beers and Bitcoin. So uh, Tusk works with uh, uh, firearms providers to be able to continue selling with cryptocurrency instead of traditional money, which I think is great. Uh, Rob, Rob replied to one of my threads and uh, shout out to Rob. And he said, well, don't you feel like people should um, don't you feel like people should be able to speak their minds, especially people that are in the industry and have insider information about how crooked I'm not saying I'm, I'm not personally saying right now, anyone is crooked. All I'm saying is, is that he's saying, you know, insiders being a CEO of a project, he knows there's a lot more craziness that goes on than people even know. And shouldn't people be allowed to speak up about that? What do you think? I mean, People should be allowed to speak up. I think that because this is the beginning, this is the beginning of crypto. I mean, yeah, Bitcoin's 10 years old, 11 year, almost 11 years old. It's still the beginning. Um, I think that there's a lot of, a lot of things that need to be shaken out of the space. I think there's a lot of people that need to be shaken out of the space, definitely projects. I think if there are some bad actors, we need to let the world know that so people don't get taken advantage of. Um, I think we all need to be making informed decisions, especially if you're going to say something. If you're going to go on the record and say something publicly, I mean, you better be right. Yeah. So with that being said, uh, I, I support anybody that takes a position with their beliefs uh, and going back to the conviction of the heart. Mm -hmm. um, if, if what you're doing is right and what you're saying is right, then good, good for you. If, like, if you're like me and you say Tron is centralized uh, without knowing exactly the inner workings, uh, that's, you know, jumping to conclusions, that's making assumptions. And when you make assumptions, you yeah, make you should ask. shut the f up, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I didn't mean to put you on the spot with that. I'm sorry. Oh, it's fine. No, it's fine. I mean, it's, so, you know, it brings up a good point. It, it, yeah. it brings it full circle to what we're just talking about. Like, you know, I, I went on the record and said Tron centralized. And if they're not centralized, then they're not centralized. I still feel like they are, but that's just my opinion. And I'll have to do some more research. Yeah. But that doesn't well, mean they're I, a bad I, project. I feel like there is an argument that can be made, but 99% of people that are saying it have no idea what that right argument, what, what in my opinion is the only argument that can actually be made. They're not even, they, they don't even know. Like if I ask that same question to almost everyone on Twitter that says that, they'll just be like, oh, well, they have a CEO. Like, okay, well, only Bitcoin doesn't. Like it's pretty much the only project that does not have a CEO. So, or, or at least the CEO of a foundation that runs the project. But you can even make the argument with Bitcoin. And I know that the Bitcoin SV and Bitcoin Cash people will make the argument for sure 
the Bitcoin is centralized based on blockstream's involvement with it. Like, so there is an argument that can even be made with Bitcoin for, for centralization, oh, which I, once again, I do not support that. But I'm just saying, like, that's kind of the same thing. Like, everybody just likes to run off in the mouth and don't really know what they're talking about. It's that herd mentality. And you it see, is. I mean, you see it not only with that kind of stuff, it's with the projects. You know, it's like there's people who will, I mean, they just love and love and love their heavy bags and they will just. Some people are so delusional. It's insane. It's, it's just insane. I, I mean, I've been, you know, again, going back to my early days in, in the crypto sphere, I worked at an exchange and I was part of the, the crew that had to like investigate uh, projects before we listed them. And, you know, in doing so, you embed yourself into the community. You get on the discords, the telegrams, the Twitters, you know, you talk with the community, you get involved. And holy moly, man, some of these people are just, like you said, delusional. It's like, it's okay, nice. you definitely put too much, you went all in on this project. You know, it's, I think most of the time people do that, have that herd mentality or like, you know, this project is the God's gift to the earth because they went too far in their bags, 90% down. So they need some kind of hope to grab onto that. It's going to come back. Outside of link and BNB, I think every altcoin is down like 90% is insane. Oof. Still to this very day. This but day. It, so it, here's the thing. Okay. Like when it comes to being able to speak out, like, yes, I agree. People should have opinions. Like, that's great. I have opinions. I say them every day. I pretty much get paid to give my opinion. Like that, that, that is what it is. Okay. But it, it, at the end of the day, you have to think about the repercussion of what you're saying. For instance, I've made a very strong stand. That I will never go to China in, unless communist regime is over. I'm not interested in, in coddling the Chinese government so that one day maybe I'll be allowed to have a visa and go to a crypto exchange in China. I, I'm not going because I know I'm going to speak out and I'm going to say what I believe about the China, you know, the, the Chinese and the North Korean regimes, right? Like I mm -hmm. want to be able to speak freely about that. I believe that there is a second Holocaust going on right now in, in China with uh, 6 million Muslims that are in concentration camps. So I'm going to say that. I know that's controversial. I'm going to talk about it. I do on my channel. However, if I thought that by me saying something, about the issue that someone else would actually be hurt from that. Like if I knew that no one else knew about this and if I started speaking out about it, then all of a sudden, like they were going to start killing those Muslims. Like I wouldn't say anything, you know, right. like just because, and this is my point. Okay. Just because something is the right thing, like you feel it in your heart of hearts, convicted that something is the right thing. You have to also think about, Will people in the middle of this situation that I have no control over be hurt? Oh, me, you always got to check the repercussions of what you say. Absolutely. I hear you there. And, and to me, with Jared Tate's personal vendetta against CZ, which, once again, I like Jared Tate. I like Digibyte. I don't want people to get confused on that. Okay? I, I don't think that Jared Tate is a bad guy. I can relate to him on this because I pop off at the mouth all the time with stuff I shouldn't You're say. popping off, son. All day, er day. Like, er, I say er. stuff. Yeah. Like, okay, I was okay, going to find let me, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. This was, uh, I'm going to paraphrase it because I don't remember the actual number, um, but I know that you did, um, you tweeted the other day, uh, it's just a tweet to the Maxis saying, like, I'm going to remember, I'm going to remember you Yeah. when Bitcoin dominance is back down to 30%. 33% was it 33%? I said, I, I said in the 30s, I think. In the 30s. I might have said 30%, but I just meant the 30% range. Okay, so let me ask you, sir. When do you think that's going to happen? Uh, I, That's a great question. Maybe a year and a half within the next 18 uh -oh. months, okay. maybe. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. I, like not anytime. Certainly not soon. We're not having all coin season tomorrow. <sighs> One all coin that, season. That, that's why these people are allowed to have their day. Like, they're have, the Bitcoin maximalists are having their day right now. Like, congratulations. You in the short term, you you have won something to celebrate, which is even though your coin is uh, down since July, uh, it's up since December, mm -hmm. and you guys the Bitcoin dominance is tearing it up right now, and that's great. I'm happy for you, but so, it so, will not always be like this. Oh, that's true. I hear you. So, kind of related to that, did you watch the debate between Peter McCormack and uh, Richard Hart? Yeah, I do. I watched the highlights. <laughs> Jeez, that was ridiculous. Man, he was relentless. Uh, Peter was just relentless in the beginning. 
Yeah, Peter, Peter is serious about calling him a scammer. Richard, to Richard's credit, though, I mean, he sat there and took it. Richard seems to me like he's like a real, like, like I don't know, fun-loving, like, good-hearted guy. And, like, so he's like, like, somebody's just calling him a scammer to his face, and he's just like, <laughs> well, uh, uh, he, he, like, he, like, didn't know how to respond to it. Yeah, I, you know, one of the things that uh, it really kind of sparked what I was thinking about, what, you know, while I was listening to that was, you know, when he was talking about basically the the Ponzi scheme that uh, Richard Hart's put together where yeah. he's going to, you know, it, it guarantees so much, you know, return in, in whatever the time it is. But he also says, you know, like Bitcoin has fluctuated and he was down 95% or whatever, yeah. you know, whereas uh, Peter, who pumps bitcoin or he's a maximalist he said you know you're the true scammer because you know this is it's happened like you're pumping something that's dropped this much I, you know that it was interesting to hear that well you know somebody i made a video the other day called uh buy bit youtubers exposed which i thought was really funny mm -hmm. uh because uh some good friends of mine uh you know uh crypto face crypto zombie like they all push buy bit and guess what i do too i like buy bit i use it to leverage trade and uh bitboy.bybit.live or bybit.bitboy.live go ahead guys sign up <laughs> Hit um, that ref link. Hit that ref link. Hit that ref link. I was so like I did a video. I was like, I'm gonna expose all the YouTubers, and then of course, like I'm showing my link in the middle of it, mm -hmm. because the truth is, is that you know, there's some arguments being made right now that leverage trading is dangerous, and it is. Leverage trading is very dangerous. However, if you know how to do it the right way, if you are conservative and you're not doing 25x or 50x like degenerate gamblers like me do, and you're doing 1x, 2x, 3x, 5x max. There are some good things you can do with leverage trading, okay? It's not for beginners. I've been in crypto since 2012. I've been intense in crypto for about two and a half years now, and I just now am starting to do it. But if you want to do it, Bybit's the best place to do it, in my opinion. So, so let, me ask, let me ask you a question. As, as someone who, same kind of thing, and, and I'll let you get back to yeah. what you're talking about. And this is just, it relates to that because same thing. I've been in crypto for a couple of years now. I consider myself to be just a, a wretched trader. Um, everything that I buy immediately drops down. So that scares the shit out of me to want to get into leverage trading because I know every time I make a trade, it goes down, whether it's a little bit or a lot bit, whatever. What do you say to new people that want to get into leverage trading that might have similar experiences in just normal book trading? Yeah, I suck at trading too. I, I, think, I think most people that probably get into leverage trading suck at it. And I think it's one of those things where I have the market cipher indicator that works really well. I've got all kinds of other indicators that people are trying to sell me on, not to buy, but say like, look, there's a better indicator even than that. So I'm working off a system that other people are using. I'm, I'm working off some of Crypto Face's calls. Like that's where I've made a lot, my most money at has been based on decisions that he has said. And now I've learned after doing this for a while that he's not perfect either. Like he's made some really bad calls too, you know? That's why it's important to do the risk management and, and, and whatever. But I will say his, I think his team in the Bybit games is number three out of like, uh, out of 300. Oh, wow. I think that says right there, he knows what he's talking about and he still fails, okay, yeah. from time to time. But, but what it does is, is once you really start like watching these indicators and listening to other people's calls and uh, his brother, Flopping Groper, that's in his Discord, CryptoFace's brother. We met him in Vegas him. too, right? We met yeah, both yeah, he's of those a, right dude, He's cool. a smart dude. Those, those are some cool guys. It was fun yeah. hanging out with them, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I, lo I love his brother, Flopping Grover. He's awesome. So, like, I get to see his analysis of the markets at all the time. He's posting it. And so, through that, I'm learning more on my own, you you're, know? You're picking I, up, like, the, the trends in your brain of how you're exactly. seeing the stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm making mistakes. I still make mistakes, but I try to learn from those mistakes. A lot of those mistakes come from the fact I'm degenerate and I'm a gambler. <laughs> that's where a lot of my mistakes come from because I'm just like, Oh, well, he says it's going up. This time I think he's really right based on nothing other than I hope I make a lot of money and I'll go like 25X and then I'll get wrecked. Like I lost $1,700 on a trade a couple weeks ago. Like it was brutal, you know, um, because, because I got too greedy, you know, mm -hmm. but I'm learning through the process and I'm also not blaming anyone else. And yeah. that was my whole thing with that Bybit video was like, hey, you're responsible for your own financial decisions. I'm not responsible for it. If you want to sign up, sign up. If you don't, don't. Crypto face is not. Crypto zombie is not. Sonny Decree is not. The, Carl, the moon, he, he's not. Martini guy, he's not. None of these guys are responsible for your financial decision. And in well, crypto, where we're all talking about be your own bank, mm -hmm. and we're supposed to be responsible for our own financial decisions, but yet everybody's blaming everybody else if they get wrecked. And, and, and so there was a stat that says that I think 73% of leverage traders lose. Well, that's a pretty big number, 73%. Well, I would also argue if I told you, hey, you got a 27% chance to make a lot of money, most people would take that. 
That's, that's a you know. one out of four chance to make a lot of money. Most people would take it. But you, you have to learn that there's a process to learning how to become one of those 27%. And so I had people in the comments attacking me saying, oh, well, uh, what kind of scammer you are? It's got a 73% fail rate. And yet here you are talking about how great it is. Get out of crypto. Because guess what? Bitcoin was down 87% at one point. Right. All the altcoins are down 90 to 100% almost. Right. So, so what's more risky? What has the better win percentage? Leverage trading or hodling over the last two years, you know? And I, I just think that, that that's what it boils down to is that, uh, you know, people just love calling people scammers. They love calling anything a scam. We know that. Um, and I think that getting back to the Richard Hart specific situation, I don't think that he is a scammer. I don't think that he has, that he said, you know what? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this coin. I'm going to get everybody to send me money and then I'm going to steal the money. Okay. I don't, I don't think that that is the situation. However, as knowledgeable as this guy is about crypto, he's also delusional. I think that's the problem. I think he really believes in what he's pushing. I think he really believes different than the Jorg Molt situation with the Bitcoin retirement plan. He never believed he'd be able to pay those money back. Or, right. Money back, I don't believe. But I believe that Richard really believes this. Now, do you think, do you think that his kind of the, the, the back end thought about this whole thing is like, okay, so he got $4 million in Ether, right? Yeah. Somewhere around there. Yeah, $4 million. Take, that, take that money in Ether, throw it into Bitcoin, lock it up for that two-year period. Everyone knows Bitcoin's going to go up at least a little bit in the next couple of years. Well, a little bit. Thanks. Oh, it's going to. That I mean, you got the, you, you got true there's nothing no guarantees there's no that. there is no guarantee bitcoin could break tomorrow true and, and you know what if i don't you, think it, i mean that's that, that sounds like a silly statement but i think people understand what i'm saying and it's 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 not going to but i mean there there are things that could occur we could have right. we can have a giant emp tomorrow that knocks out the entire power grid in the united states and the world wherever and then yes the bitcoin will be there when the lights turn back on but nobody's going to care, you know, because we're like, what are we going to do? How are we going to survive? You know, and there, there are scenarios that could happen. Oh, that's, that's scary to think about. Like yeah. just knocking out the power grid. I mean, we're all, we're all toast at that point. Well, y'all all believe in aliens. I'm the only one that doesn't. I don't but believe if all the aliens. aliens come tomorrow and take all our, take all our computers. What are you going to do with your Bitcoin then? Take me to your leader. <laughs> Nerd alert. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. We're, we're, we're all going to take them to Richard Hart. I think so. I, that, and that's, that's again, so back to that. That's what I think. I think that he's, he's collected that ether. He's probably going to trade it because he was being, he was dodging, you know, what he's done with it, where it is, show us the wallet, all that kind of stuff. You know, who, who has the keys to all that stuff. I think that eventually it's all going to be transferred into Bitcoin. He'll wait for it to go up and then he'll make his payouts maybe in two yeah. years based off of that, based off of the growth that you'll see on an ROI on and Bitcoin, not his hex coin because no one needs that. Here's what's scary, and this to me is the turning point, because I've kind of been sitting on the sidelines with it. Like, I don't really want to call it a scam because I don't. I pers like it sounds bad. I know doesn't it, it, it fits? It fit, doesn't it fit the mode of a yes. uh, Ponzi? Yeah, it fits. However, like you would think, someone as well known as Richard Hart like wouldn't be scamming people. Like you would think, you know, like where where's he gonna go? Where's he gonna exit scam to? Everybody knows who he is, you know. True. Which is much different than like. Could, if I said, hey, could you tell me what the Bitcoin CEO looks like or the BitConnect CEO looked like? Can you even tell me? No. Can you tell me what nationality he is? No. No. Right, right. So, Do you know, his, was, do you, do you know his name? I don't know his name. I know he's Indian. I know he was arrested uh, last September. I mean, we could say that same thing about CoinMarketCap though, right? It wasn't there a long time where we couldn't, until we talked to Digital Lawrence, like, you know, we couldn't find anything about that guy. He's still anonymous. I mean, he's a, he did it. He did it. Brandon Chez, he, he did an interview at a conference and it was like behind a curtain. Stop it. Are you serious? I swear to God. How stupid. Uh, whatever. Jeez, come on, man. At least do like a nine mask or something. So, something. Okay. Come on. You know, we're, yeah, we're a nine mask. <laughs> yeah. We're do, do something. Don't be that petty. Like nobody cares how much. Yeah. But the, the only thing is, is like, you know, BitConnect could exit scam. They exit scam. Like CoinMarketCap isn't trying to exit scam because it's not a project, you know? Yeah. So, so Richard Hart doesn't really have anywhere to go. This to me was the turning point for the whole thing where I said, okay, like this is definitely not something I'm going to support. And this is something I'm going to warn people against. In that interview with Peter McCormack, with Peter, with Peter, Peter McCormack, McCormack, which by the way, Peter, we're number 233 
on iTunes in Great Britain. We're coming for your arse. Okay. Is that the worst British accent ever, you think? That was terrible. No, that, it should be because people from freaking Great Britain, I don't care if you're listening or not, you're terrible people. No, don't say that. We're trending, bro. F. Dude, I didn't think of the repercussions of my statement. What it might oh, have my podcast no, host. It all comes, all full, comes circle, full circle, sir. I'm just kidding. We love you if you're over there, okay? Obviously, I, I, I can't do a proper uh, British accent. But uh, uh, the whole point here is, in that interview, it becomes clear that Richard Hart is the sole owner of the private keys to the account where everybody sent the, the ETH to. Mm-hmm. Do you have $4 million worth of ETH singing in one account? What a dumbass. To me, that's pull, scary. Like, that's really be, scary. Better, like, better be in cold storage. Th- there are all kinds of situations. What if Richard Hart has a heart attack tomorrow? <laughs> or, or a change of heart. <laughs> the heart heart attack, okay? What if he dies? What if, what if Peter McCormack decides, you know what, I want to take this guy out. He's scamming to me evil, and he shows up, you know, guns a blaze. Oh, sorry, in, in the UK, they don't use guns. Knives a blazing, you Knives. know? Knives are swatching. Knives are swatching, you know? What are, what's going to happen? Uh, but there are scenarios that could happen where that money could be lost forever. You know, mm-hmm. it could get hacked. I mean, that's possible. It, it sounds like, to me, in the interview, it's sitting on one account, and Richard R. has keys to it. Like, it's just sitting on his, my Ether wallet or something. I don't know where it is. Maybe it's safer than that. But, and hopefully he's smart enough to set up some kind of chain for how people could get access to it. But if there's some protocol where someone else could get access to it, then that means that could be compromised. Yeah. yeah. So it's what scary. And I, it's something I just don't want to, you know, I, I, I think he has good intentions. I don't think he has bad intentions, but I think this whole thing is asinine. Do you think anybody That's a 10, that's 11. Do you think anybody listening to the show would? No, invest, no one is listening to the show. That's would inv- would invest in our um, beards and bitcoins crypto retirement fund? Same kind of thing. I mean, it will invest. We'll give you an ROI of a thousand percent in the next, say, two years. Yeah, I think they will. Uh, we'll put the address up. You guys send it in, and we'll take care of all your monies. It's a, it's a community fund. You Ooh, can community. all look at it, but only I have the keys. That's not. That's not terrible. No, it's not terrible. I'm all for it, actually. Yeah, I'll call you Quadriga. Quadriga. <laughs> so, uh, guys, I'm just going to exit scan my own death. Well, I think that's probably going to wrap it up today. I mean, we've talked about a lot of stuff. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a good convo on a Friday afternoon. Much better than a day in the office for, for this guy. I enjoyed it immensely. Oh, yeah. Wait, isn't that your office? <laughs> Yeah. What are you even talking about? Well, when I'm working, it's my office. When I'm You're recording, working. it's my studio. My studio. My so, sterile studio. It's all white. I need I need a backdrop of a major metropolitan city. I need that dog in the background. I need Fia running around. You know what? You are very lucky because when you saw her walk in and scratching, I could see her of the reflection of my computer screen on the other side, and she uh, she dropped a deucer. Uh, that would have been... <laughs> That would have been embarrassing if she dropped it on the live stream. That is hilarious, dude. She, I, man, I hope she does that one day. That's my, that's my dream. Okay. We could probably Honestly, set that up. My dream. I will have to put it on TikTok. That'll be TikTok oh. famous right there. Dude, Fia, I'm going to set Fia up with a TikTok account, yeah. I think. So, well, thank you to our show sponsors, uh, Monarch Wallet, mm-hmm. and also to our new sponsor, Manscaped. Uh, you guys can use the promo code BEARDS on the Manscaped website, and you can trim your pubes. Yeah, yeah. Save yourself twenty percent and get some free shipping. So we'll be uh, we'll be doing some product testing. Um, ben will show some videos of him using the lawnmower two point And wait, 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 what? I <laughs> oh, got you. No, no, no. We don't. We do not want to see videos of that. You agreed. Well, I mean, uh, you can send it to me personally. I like. I'll check it out. Just I mean, we're we're tight. You know, what I'm saying we're boys. But uh, you know, Saturday's for the boys. So if you want to send it to me tomorrow, I'll check it out. But I don't know if the audience wants to see it. I think we might get me too. Leave leave some comments on the uh, on the Twitter account. Let us know what you think. Yeah, we want to know. Do you want to see a video of Justin using the the uh, lawnmower? Is that what it's called? The lawnmower 2.0. Yeah, yeah. with the skin skin safe technology. Uh, you got to keep your balls safe. No nicks. <laughs> nice. All right, guys. Well, that's it for today. We will see you guys later. See you.